All right, guys, I just filmed my follow-up video here on the Anytone 578 from BridgeCom Systems. This radio by BridgeCom Systems in order to do testing, evaluation, and review and be able to tell you guys about it here. So I just did my initial power-up on the radio. We'll get into that here in just a second. If you're in the market for any of these Anytone radios, BridgeCom Systems is going to be the best place to get it. They have all kinds of resources, including their BridgeCom University. To help you get off the ground, getting into DMR can be a little confusing. It's definitely not your typical typical analog radio. All right, my follow-up video on this Anytone 578 has been long overdue. Had a lot of other stuff going on. Haven't been able to get around to it. I just now got it wired up. Haven't even powered it on yet. So we're going to walk through what that's going to look like. We're going to turn on the power supply here and it's turned on by itself. All right. This might have an ignition sense function built into it. If you're not familiar with what ignition sense is, that basically means that once the radio gets power to it, it automatically turns on without having to press the power button. I don't know if it for sure has that yet. I'll have to get into the CPS and check that out. But so right now it's asking us to calibrate the date and time. Let's see. All right, so your channel knob over here is going to be how you're going to adjust that. We are UTC minus seven. All right, the channel knob here is also the is also a push button. So that push button is how you're going to cycle it to the next field here. It is 2025. It is February 24th. I'm looking for the day or the month. All right, that is looking for the month. February, what did I say, 24th. And it is currently 6.17 in the morning. All right. So we've got the date and time set. Let's hit menu to confirm. And we're just going to take a look at kind of what the radio looks like, how it's all going to work when you first, when you first get it all set up. All right. So I'm going to see if I can cycle through the menu with the mic here so I don't have my hands in the way. Let's go into the menu. So we've got talk group first, and it looks like if we go through here, we can look at our talk group list. All right, I've got the up and down buttons on the mic I'm working with. So we've got our talk group list. So if we were to go in here, this would be where all of our different talk groups are listed. Okay, so there's just one contact in there right now, just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, pretty basic. Let's back out of there. We can edit that contact or we can select that contact. We don't need to do that right now. So we're gonna come back down here. We can add a new contact. We can do manual dial or we can add the talker alias. Let's see what that looks like actually. So I'm actually not sure what the talker alias is. I'm gonna have to play around with that and we'll see more of what that does. So these Anytone radios are one of the only well, they're one of the few DMR radios out there on the market that can be entirely front panel programmed start to finish. So if we're going down from here, we've got our messages next. So if you're using DMR, you can actually send texts back and forth between radios like I've shown before. No cell service required for that. This is strictly over RF. So you can write a new message. You've got your inbox, you've got your outbox, quick texts, and any drafts that you might have are going to be stored in there. So we're not going too deep into this. This is just kind of a brief look at the radio once you get it set up. So you've got a call log here. So any incoming and outgoing, typically the call log is going to be incoming and outgoing private calls. So you'd be able to see a list of them here. So you've got last call, sent, answered, missed, pretty basic stuff. These, the menu systems on these and the way they function to me is very reminiscent of older cell phones. If you kind of come at it from that angle, it should be pretty easy to learn, in my opinion. Let's come back in here. Next option down is the zone. So that's one of the things I like with DMR radios and other digital radios for that matter is they're very zone dependent. So the different zones will actually allow you to kind of organize your channels and keep them in a more, what's the word I'm looking for? It's easier to keep them organized and just be able to find what you're looking for easier. Sorry, I'd still early in the morning. Haven't had my coffee yet. This is just the time that I have now to do this video. So let's come back down here. We've got the zone. If you've got scan list set up, that's going to be in here. So we can see, can we edit the scan lists in here? We can turn scan on and off. CDT scan. Got to learn what that one does. 
let's keep going. So these do have, uh, the Anytones do have roaming capability built in. So if you have multiple DMR repeaters in your area, you can set up those repeaters on this radio with roaming. So it will actually, this is going to be for ham radio repeaters. It will allow you to switch from one repeater to another seamlessly while staying on the same top group. Kind of almost like how you're, if you're driving around on a phone call, your phone switches between towers. The radio does a similar thing. We've got our settings. We've got options to record. So you can actually record incoming and outgoing transmissions. I've done this before on my Anytone 878. It's actually pretty handy. We've got the GPS functions. We've got digital monitor. Uh, I'm gonna have to play around with that a little bit to be able to tell you exactly what that does. Like I said, I literally just powered up this radio for the first time and we're just kind of digging through it and seeing what it looks like. We've got the Bluetooth menu and we've also got APRS built into this radio. So that is the end of the menu here. Let's see. I'm gonna take a look here and see how easy it is to figure out how to front panel program a channel. Okay, so we're getting right into the front panel programming here. Channel set. Let's do new channel. Let's just make it channel one. Channel name, let's call it test and I've got the full keypad on the mic here that's what I'm using to type it in with all right so it's kind of walking us through kind of walking us through the options here so this is creating a digital channel so now it's asking for what talk group we're using it's going to choose contact one rx group list it's selecting group one channel exists replace yes let's replace it all right so now it's saved now Channel type, now is when you can select whether it's an analog or digital channel. You can have it combined analog and digital with transmit on analog. You can have it combined analog and digital transmit on digital. Let's make this a digital channel. And let's go back. We've got transmit power. Sure, power turbo, why not? Offset. Normally I don't mess with the offset. That's going to be like an automatic repeater offset. I tend to prefer to input those frequencies manually myself. Bandwidth on digital, you don't have an option to select the bandwidth. It's going to be narrow by default. Receive frequency. Let's just put this in. I'm not actually going to transmit right now, but let's just put it in as 446. RX frequency error. So it actually likes to have five digits past, I believe it's five digits past the decimal. Let's check that. Yeah, five digits past the decimal is what the radio wants to have input. So that's been confirmed. Now, the trick was trying to figure out how to get out of this menu. So I've done it before where, was it press and hold delete? Nope, that was not it. Okay, so deleting it allowed us to go back. Let's select that again. Okay, it's still set. All right, so that's how you do it. Delete and then back and it's still saved. Transmit frequency, we're gonna do the same thing here. Okay, transmit frequency is already set because I didn't mess with the I didn't mess with the offset, it automatically input that into the transmit frequency. Talk around, we don't need talk around on, we're not setting this up for a repeater, so we're not gonna worry about that. Channel name, we've already set this to test, VFO channel, not support. So we're in VFO mode right now still. Transmit allow, so this is going to be your, well, it's your transmit allow settings. You can either have it uh, always allow. You can have it to be where if the channel is free, you're allowed to transmit, otherwise the radio won't do it. If you have it set to color code free, which is what most TAM radio repeaters want you to have it set up as, that just means if there's a transmission with the same color code on that channel, you won't be able to uh, transmit at that time. So we already lost our place in the menu. I don't like how quickly it does, I don't like how quickly it kicks you out of the menu. We might have to go into the CPS and see if we can change that. Channel settings, we were at talk around, we were at name, we did TX allow, TX prohibit. So this is if you want to set up a channel to be receive only, you would turn TX prohibit on. That's going to be a good idea if you're setting up any uh, scanner channels for any law enforcement or anything like that. Now we've got our radio ID. There's my radio, which came in the radio already. Let's add a radio ID real quick. I'm going to edit ID and we're just going to do a random radio ID. 
It doesn't have to be a ham radio ID in order to use these radios. You can use whatever ID you want. You will have to use a ham radio ID if you want to get onto the repeaters, but I actually use this. I use my DMR radios on my business license frequencies, so I can use whatever ID I want to use. And we can save that radio ID. Let's go back. I know this video is running long. If you've stuck with me this long, thank you. We've got our color codes. Let's keep going down. You can choose your time slot. You can set your digital encryption. This is on a ham radio frequency. We're not going to set up the encryption on here, but I will be setting that up at a later date, like I said, on my business license frequencies. Encryption type. We've got normal or enhanced. There's a number of different encryption algorithms that are available on this Anytone. We can get into that more once we look at the CPS. The receive group list is kind of like a scan list, but it's specifically for talk groups that are going to be on the same frequency. So it allows you to set up a list of other talk groups that you would want to potentially listen to. It's, that's pretty much all it is. Back into settings. Trying to wrap this up kind of quick here. Sorry we're running so long. work alone. That's going to be, there's a lot of other features built into this radio. I don't need to cover them all right now. That will, that will add a lot of time unnecessarily to this video. Yeah, there's quite a few settings in here for every channel. So these Anytone 578s, they can be fully front panel programmed and it's not really that hard to get yourself set up and going without getting into the CPS. That being said, if you go through the CPS, you're going to have a much easier time trying to get it all set up.